Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Yasser Ahmed. So in this video, we will continue looking at chapter four from the ICT IGCC course. And we're going to be finishing off 4.2, network issues and communication. So please check out the previous videos. Um, so now we're going to be starting off by looking at a computer virus. So what is a computer virus? It basically works in the same way as a virus may affect your body. So obviously it's not a programming code that's gonna affect your body. So in computing terms, um, a virus is a piece, a pro programming code or software which can install and replicate itself onto a computer system without the user's permission. So you may accidentally install a virus onto your computer system by clicking on a link and downloading something um, onto your computer. It could be an attachment from an unknown email. So you will not know initially if you have a virus. However, then you may start to see some effects of, of a computer virus over a period of time. So it could cause the computer to crash or become slower or unresponsive. Sometimes files can be deleted, leading to the computer for malfunctioning. Uh, data files can be copied by the hacker or the files could be corrupted and could stop production until a virus has been quarantined. So what can we do to prevent um, computer viruses? So we can install antivirus software and make sure it's regularly updated. So you'd have to have a subscription which will update your virus definitions on your computer system. Um, do not use software or USBs from uh, drives from online sources, unknown sources. Um, some networks or some schools may block you from using your USB stick or drive um, unless you have permission. Be careful about clicking on links from untrusted websites and be careful about downloading attachments from unknown email addresses as well. So how can you uh, remove or quarantine a file? So what tends to happen with emails attachments, they are scanned. Um, the antivirus software compares them to known viruses on this database. Make sure this is updated. If the file is infected, the antivirus software will then prompt the user to either quarantine or delete the file. Okay, so when you are using antivirus software, it will scan your computer. Uh, any known viruses will be compared compared to what it has on this database. And if there's a match, then the application will ask the user, what do you want to do? Do you want to quarantine, separate the file, or just get rid of it, delete the file? Uh, what is malware and the effects of malware? So malware is any type of computer code written deliberately to cause damage to a device. And one example of uh, malware could be ransomware. And it's a type of malware that encrypts users' data for the purpose of extorting a ransom. So maybe when you, every time you start your computer, uh, your computer gets locked up and you may be asked for a sum of money to unlock your computer system. So let's have a look at some of these exam questions. Um, a legal document is sent as a file attachment. So explain the steps that need to be taken to ensure that if a virus is attached to a file, it cannot affect a computer. Yeah, so to ensure the virus is attached to a file, it cannot affect, infect the computer. So what can you do? So let's say you receive an email. Um, the email includes um, an attachment which has a virus. What can you do to avoid that virus from getting onto your computer? So the system must have installed an antivirus software. The antivirus software must be up to date. The email attachment is scanned by the antivirus software. The email is not opened um, or attachment is not downloaded until any virus is removed by the antivirus software. Okay, so the email cannot be opened or the attachment cannot be downloaded until the virus has been removed by the um, antivirus software. A computer virus has, has been downloaded from an infected file. Describe three effects this could have on a computer. So the hard disk could be filled up. So you may be like, yeah, I've got loads of space in my hard drive. But if you have a virus on your computer system, then that storage space could be taken by maybe replicated files. Uh, the computer is performing routine tasks a lot more slowly compared to uh, normal performance. Pop-ups keep appearing on the screen and your antivirus stop software stops working. 
Right, now what we're going to be looking at is a uh, video conferencing. So video conferencing uses both video and the sound um, using in, an, an internet connection. And it can be used to have business meetings when people are in different locations. So we have two offices, for example, one could be in London, one could be in Paris, and people want to meet. Okay, so you'd normally sit in front of a screen and maybe talking to a microphone. And on the other side, they could see your visual, your face, obviously hear your audio as well okay so here a typical um, hardware that you'd need a web camera a monitor speaker or headset a microphone and um, you could carry out these video conferencing on teams or google meets or these types of applications um, now let's have a look at um, or let me say that again let's have a look at audio conferencing so audio conferencing can be done over a telephone network or using a computer and making use of a voice over internet protocol. So like WhatsApp, for example, the organizer of the phone conference has given a unique pin, which can be shared with participants. For participants to join, they have to dial the conference phone number and then they would have to enter a pin. So what's required, um, a telephone. So basically you can call um, an audio conference and listen into the main speaker and um, speaking on the call. Okay, to join the conference, you will have to have received a PIN um, from the conference provider. Now let's have a look at a web conference. Um, this is, at hard way, is the same as a video conference. Keyboard may be used if you are going to be writing messages. So what is a web conference? So again, a web conference like the video conference needs an internet connection. Okay, it's very similar to the video conference, conference as participants can hear audio and can see a live video stream. Participants can join a web conference by clicking on the supplied link, so normally from the organizer. Okay, and participants can join and leave the web conference at any time. So the difference with this one and the video conference, this is normally one way, uh, sorry, two way. Uh, you could have one office speaking to another office. This would be where one person group people are leading and there's an audience watching that mainstream. Um, so instant messaging is a feature where people can leave messages. So for example, a YouTube live could be an example of um, a web conference. One person could be setting up a stream and then many people can watch the stream and they can interact by uh, writing instant messages. Participants can also be given to this, um, can be given permission to speak and share content, it could be their screen to show images or videos or presentations. So this is basically where one person would be leading and many people are watching and then the people watching can interact with the conference. So let's have a look at these exam questions here. A head teacher is planning to hold a video conference with head teachers from other schools. The head teacher have already, so the head teacher already have basic internet connected desktop computer systems, including a monitor, keyboard and mouse. So identify three pieces of additional hardware they need in order to participate in a video conference. So to speak, we need a microphone, uh, we need a video camera or web camera um, to show your uh, face. Don't say camera, make sure it's a video camera or web camera and speakers or headphones to hear the output from the audio. Um, they already have a monitor, so there's no need to say a screen or anything like that. Um, a technician is setting up hardware for the video conference. State three tasks the technician would need to do to set up the hardware for the video conference. You can assume that the hardware required has already been purchased. So the technician can make sure the video camera, web camera, microphone, speakers, headphones are all switched on. Ensure all hardware devices are connected. They can carry out tests on the microphone. They can check their volume levels. Um, she can check the internet connectivity and they can adjust the webcam so the head teacher can be seen. Okay, so these are the steps required to set up an audio conference and a web conference. So let's have a look at the audio conference first. So setting up an audio conference, you would have to contact the audio conference provider a phone number and PIN is provided for the organizer and the participants. The conference details would be emailed to the participants. 
Organizer, call, organizer calls the number and enters a pin, and then the participants will then call the number and then enter their pin to join that call. And for the web conference, um, again, if you're looking to have a web conference, you can contact a web conference provider. The web link and pin is provided for the organizer and the participants. Conference details are emailed to the participants, so the same as the audio one. The organizer will start the conference and the participants can join by accessing the web links and then can enter their pin to join. So uh, some things are quite similar for the, setting up the audio and the web conference. So set, start by uh, contacting the provider. Obviously a pin would be provided. The participants would have to enter the pin in order to join the audio call or the web conference. Okay, so let's look at some advantages and disadvantages of using video conferencing, audio conferencing, and video conferencing. So uh, should be, that should be web conferencing. Okay, so kind of repeating the same thing there. So the advantage is, or the advantage is, no need to travel to have meetings, which would cut down on traveling costs, including flights and hotel, and also traveling time. Video conference can be held at short notice. It facilitates long distance learning and students can access live lectures without having to travel. However, the disadvantage is there could be technical problems with your internet or hardware that could affect the quality of your video conference. So if you are talking about this in your exams, don't say uh, you could have technical problems with your audio or video um, or your internet. That, If you mention technical problems, that will likely be leading towards one mark. The setting up costs to purchase hardware, software, and to provide relevant training to staff could be quite expensive. Um, you'd have to make sure the participants have the right hardware in order to access the video conference or web conferences. Also, is a lack of personal contact. So, for example, during COVID times when we had to have distance learning, so the teacher would be delivering like a, a video conference, you could say, web conference. Uh, it wasn't the same feeling as you would do if you were in a classroom with your students. So that lack of personal contact you would have if it was a face-to-face -face meeting, it's easier to establish those relationships if you're seeing people face-to-face -face rather than an online meeting. Different time zones could make it difficult to find a suitable time to have a meeting. And it may not be possible to sign documents or share anything else as well physically um, between participants. Obviously you can send attachments via emails and so on. Um, but if you need to sign documents, then that won't be possible. And let's have a look at some of these questions here. So describe the advantage and disadvantage of using video conferencing. So I'm not going to go through uh, the whole question. You can pause this and you can have a look at the key parts in yellow. Um, it's basically all the things that we've discussed already. So it can facilitate long distance learning, especially during COVID, which was essential when we couldn't travel. Um, the lack of personal contact um, and a tone and context of the conversation may be more difficult online. If you could see that human in front of you, you could read their body language, which would make it more easier to understand the content of the lesson. Let's have a look at this question here. So describe three drawbacks of setting up and using the video conferencing. So power cuts could lead to parts of the video, co video conference shutting down. Also, a lip sync problem time lag could mean that the picture is not running at the same speed as the sound. Some participants may some participants participants may be video conferencing outside of work hours due to time zones. In addition, it would be more expensive to purchase hardware and software. Uh, furthermore, the quality of the video conference would be dependent on reliable internet access. Staff would also have to be trained. And this could be an, an additional expense for the company. Moreover, documents will not need to be will not be able to be signed, and any physical ob objects cannot be examined. Uh, let's have a look at this last one. So, the directors of a multinational car company need to communicate with each other. They have decided that the best way to do this is through a web conference. Describe uh, web conferencing and how it could be used in this scenario. So web conferencing allows for real-time collaboration and communication. Multiple users are connected to the internet and see the same screen at all times in their web browsers. The web conference will allow users to use instant messages to each other 
to so will allow users to instant message each other details of the car and voice over internet protocol could be used to allow users to discuss the car range and full motion video can be used to show the car being test driven. And there are several ways in which members of an organization can organize meetings. These include video, audio or web conferencing and organizations planning an important meeting with directors of three main offices. They are going to be setting up an audio conference. Describe the process of setting up this conference. So to set up an audio conference, a provider would have to be contacted. The conference provider would provide a phone number and a PIN for the organizer and participants. The organizer would then email the details of the conference to all participants, including the phone number and PIN. At the start of the conference, the organizer calls the provided number and types in the PIN. And then each participant tells in a number and enters the PIN to participate in the audio conference. So guys, we've come to the end of chapter four. So I think I've done this in four different sections. So please watch all of these videos. Please join me in the next video. I'm going to be looking at chapter five. Thank you for your time. Drop your comments below. Uh, like and share the video. And please help the channel grow again. Please subscribe. And again, um, ask your friends to subscribe as well for me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye.